I'm Azus, and this video is going to look at what I see as the theme behind the Doppler knives. First of all though, I'm doing a giveaway for a factory new StatTrack Orb on Itaji. It's a pretty rare and valuable skin, and I can promise that it is going to stay rare and valuable despite all the drama happening at the moment. Also, if you win, you won't be waiting 7 days to get it, you'll get it right away, so make sure you enter. Anyway, I've always seen Doppler knives as being quite an interesting group of knives in terms of the theme behind them, and I've always seen this theme as relating to science, which is what I want to explore in this video. Now, this does mean going through some science content, which is a bit risky because... Science is boring! But I'm going to do my best to make it interesting because I think what's going on here has some fairly interesting elements to it. To begin with though, I'm just going to start on a tangent and then gradually reel things back in. One of the things that has always struck me about the art that makes them the guns in Counter-Strike is the number of items with mythological or sci-fi inspiration. For example, we've got mythical animals, mythical monsters, this skull on a spacesuit. I don't know what it's exactly meant to be, but it looks pretty cool. We've got this whole menagerie of stuff and in my opinion at least a lot of it is pretty awesome now typically the relationship between the name of a skin and the artwork on it won't be hard to pick up on there's not going to be much to confuse but there's a few names out there that valve seems to have ripped straight off the physics whiteboard a good example of this is the gamma knives like gamma is a letter in the greek alphabet it's typically represented by this symbol here and that doesn't give you much to go off if you try to make a knife finish. Now, they may have been thinking of gamma radiation when they gave it that name, but you can't see gamma radiation either, although you will feel immense pain as it kills you. And while I can't speak for the developers who made those knives, I have a hunch that the name for those particular set of knives may just have been chosen because it sounds cool. It's a sneaking suspicion, but in all fairness, there was a bit of a sci-fi theme to that case, and the name does fit quite well. But this video isn't on the Gamma Knives, it's on the Doppler Knives, and it's the sort of thing that you would have thought would be a bit like the Gamma Knives, a name chosen because it sounds cool. But I think the connection is actually a little bit stronger than that, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and explain what the Doppler effect is and how it ties into these finishes. Now, I was taught what the Doppler effect was when I was in school. But like most school science courses, they made it so boring and uninteresting that I forgot almost instantly. And I can't speak for other countries' science teaching regimes or anyone else's proficiency as a student. I'm sure most of the people watching were better than I was, but I'm going to guess most people don't know what the Doppler effect is. For a long time, if you had asked me, I probably would have told you it's the weird feeling you get when Dudu transforms into Siri or when you fight a Doppler that transforms into Geralt. Oh, I feel kind of bad now. That probably tells you a lot about my priorities in life, but once you get past the, the dry mathematical underpinnings of the Doppler effect, which I'm just going to ignore, the actual effect in science is kind of interesting. In fact, it's almost as interesting as this video would be if I just stuck to The Witcher 3. So, the Doppler effect was described by this Austrian guy called Christian Doppler. I almost feel like I could claim him as a fellow countryman, considering how much people mix up Austria and Australia. As John Howard accurately noted when he went to thank the Austrian troops there. Basically, what the Doppler effect describes is a shift in frequency of a wave depending on the direction its source is moving in relative to your position. And when I say waves, typically I mean sound or electromagnetic radiation. For example, this is what it looks like with sound waves from a car driving towards you. As you can see, there are much shorter wavelengths as the car heads towards you and longer wavelengths as it heads away. This is the reason why a police siren has a higher pitched sound when it's moving towards you than it does when it's moving away from you. Of course, I'm not normally paying attention, I'm normally running, but that's beside the point. This effect has a lot of applications. Medical applications, it's used in radar, it's used in speed cameras, a lot of stuff, but there's a particular place where it's used that I want to explore here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this picture of a phase 2 Doppler knife and stick a picture of a star forming region known as the Eagle Nebula behind it. You may notice a slight correlation between the colours. It's a little bit like whoever was making this knife perhaps looked at some, you know, pictures from the Hubble Space Telescope when they were making it. 
but I think we need to go a little bit deeper into this whole astrophysics dimension of the Doppler effect to sort of substantiate what I'm talking about here. And again, I'm going to start with something slightly off topic and reel it back in. So if you were to watch some Kurskastad videos, and they're pretty awesome videos, I recommend them, but one of the things you will notice is that they're constantly telling you how the universe is going to die. And as far as we know, in the end, the universe itself will die, but everything has to die at some point, which will leave the universe unrecognizable. An absolutely dark and cold graveyard. Our videos induce existential dread in many people. Oh yeah, no shit they do. And look, there is plenty of common ground when it comes to the universe ending. Most religions, you know, believe in end times. But the people who make the Cursus ad videos don't seem particularly religious to me. So that raises the question of, why do they think the universe is going to end? How could they possibly know what the universe is going to look like in a thousand billion years time? Well, this is where our Doppler effect actually comes into it. It's one of the reasons we know when and how the universe is going to die. So to show how this works, I need to focus on the electromagnetic spectrum. So we'll zoom in on it, not, not that part. As discussed, it kind of kills you. Not that part either, that one kills you as well, although there are other applications you may have heard of. Not that part, that one also kills you, although it'll kill you very slowly and in the meantime you'll get a very sexy tan. And I know about that, I'm an Australian. Skin cancer is more common in Australia and New Zealand than anywhere else. What we are going to focus on is this part here. If you're confused, this is visible light. Visible light is electromagnetic radiation at a certain wavelength. If you have a spectrograph and you point it at a source of light, it will look like this. You'll get this rainbow of colour. And this rainbow can do all sorts of extraordinary things. The first thing that we need to mention is that bits of the spectrum will be missing depending on what elements make up the objects that you're looking at. It's got to do with some stuff going on at the atomic level, which I'm not going to go into, but it means that if you get the light from a particular source, this is from pointing a spectrograph at the sun, for example, there's going to be some bars across it where the light is missing. So that's pretty useful because it means you can point your telescope at basically any object in the universe you're receiving light from and figure out what it's made of, or at least what's on the outside of it. Pretty handy, but let's just quickly think back to the Doppler effect for a moment. And the Doppler effect states that the wavelength will change depending on whether the object's moving towards you or away from you, and how fast it's moving will determine the magnitude of that change. And by implication, these bars of missing light become quite useful because they're going to shift based on how strong the Doppler effect is. Now, we actually have names depending on which way it's shifting. So if something's moving towards you, it shifts towards the blue end because its wavelength becomes smaller. We call that blue shifting. If something's moving away from you, the wavelength will shift towards the red end because it'll be slower. We call that red shift. Now, if you were to find the Doppler shift of galaxies outside the Milky Way, you will find that aside from a few nearby galaxies, every single one is red shifted. The universe is expanding. It's being torn apart by the expansion of space, faster than gravity can pull it back together. This is why Kurstasad says stuff like this. An absolutely dark and cold graveyard with black holes and black dwarfs scattered over trillions of light years. So that's not very positive. As it happens though, there are some more inspiring uses of the Doppler effect. For example, you can point them at distant stars and use small Doppler shifts in their spectrum to work out whether there's planets orbiting them or not. That's how we found, for example, a planet not that much bigger than the Earth orbiting the nearest star to the Sun, Proxima Centauri. But at the end of the day, this video isn't about me going down deeper and deeper rabbit holes into astrophysics, it's about the Doppler knives. I've talked about redshift, I've talked about blue shift, and you can probably see the reason I brought it up. It just so happens that the Doppler knives contain a couple of special red and blue knives. I'm going to suggest that this probably isn't a coincidence. Now, I imagine some of these phases were probably designed before the idea of calling them the Doppler finishes was thought of, but I think the ultimate product was also very deliberate. You've got these knives that look as if they've been designed based on interstellar nebulas, and these knives that match up to the different wavelength shifts of the Doppler effect. I just think it's really neat that there's this theme tying all the different phases together. I wouldn't go as far as saying that it gives the collection some sort of meaning, 
but I just appreciate the fact that there's some thought behind it. It's not a bunch of random colours thrown together. And that's really what I wanted to share with this video. Anyway, one or two quick little things I wanted to clear up with the science because I made a lot of simplifications, obviously. First of all, the Doppler shift works with the entire electromagnetic spectrum, not just the part we can see. Secondly, when astrophysicists actually work with the spectrums of different objects, they don't normally use these rainbow things that I was showing. Looks a bit more like this, I thought I'd just point that out. Oh, and the heat death of the universe, that's a little bit more complicated than just the universe expanding. There's a couple of things that are going to cause it, and I don't really recommend thinking about it. It's basically never going to happen. But anyway, that's pretty much it for now. Um, more stuff coming soon. It took me longer to get this out than I would have liked, but I hope people enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Otherwise, trust the numbers, not your gut. I'm Jesus. Thanks for watching. See ya.